All right, so I thought I'd make a little update video on uh, what I've been up to. Apparently I have to hold it this way. The last uh, yeah, a few weeks, I guess, with our lawn care and just house stuff, whatever, you know, just called it what, kind of like an update vlog. Today is Monday. I believe it's the 27th of July. Does that sound right? Let me see, I know the 25th was Saturday. So 27th, okay. And so, we have been mowing anywhere between one week we only mowed like 10 lawns because it was everything was so dried up and uh let me back up a little bit when things finally kind of started getting a little bit dry it was actually a little about two or three weeks earlier than normal it was still in june mid-june things started to dry up a little bit and the first week that we actually skipped any lawns uh, we skipped, if I'm not mistaken, you can look back at one of my videos. We skipped eight. Might have been nine, but I think just eight. So we skipped eight lawns. And then, um, which was okay. And I'll get into why it's okay here in a minute. And then the next week we skipped 24 lawns. So uh, we do about 35 a week in case anybody was curious. Okay, I don't know if I ever put that out there. We do 30. Basically, we have 35 to 36 accounts. It's 35, and uh, uh, there's a couple that just don't grow, you know? So, you know, they're like every other week, like one, two, couple. Anyways, uh, so back to, uh, so we skipped nine or eight the first week, then we skipped 24. And then the next week we actually mowed uh, 20, I think, 19. So that means that we only we skipped 16. So we were kind of going back to the back the other way. And then this, and then last week we mowed um, 29 lawns. So we only skipped six. We did get a little bit of rain. Things are a little bit green and stuff. You can kind of see my neighbor's yard is a mess. You know, my yard's not too bad. I mowed it before I went up north and stuff, which kind of leads me to why it's okay some, you know, skip some of these lawns and stuff. Because uh, we got a, we bought a cabin up north this last year and uh, we have a boat and stuff like that. So you don't want to enjoy, enjoy ourselves as much as possible. So right now we have it set up. We mow Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and um and then we go up north and then uh so we always come back usually monday monday night so anyways so we got it pretty good right now mow three days a week and have four days for fun up north so but i know that's not gonna last forever another couple weeks and then it's gonna be back to the back to the grind so what i did what i've been doing today was our trailer <sighs> I don't know what was going on. If we hit some bumps extra hard, but I did go down a dirt road a couple times, but it was real smooth dirt road. This board that the rack is actually, the rack that holds our hand tools actually fell off. I had a, um, the Milwaukee, I had our M18 trimmer hanging on one of these racks. I don't remember exactly. I think I had it hanging down here. Uh, both these, it was the only thing that was hanging on this. These were down here someplace. Anyways, yeah, one day we opened it up and yeah, this whole board, is, all the tools are on on the mowers, on the ground and stuff. And I was like, that's not cool. And then our like little boards that we put to kind of help hold the mowers in place. Um, this one had come loose. And one, this one actually came loose where I could pick it up and move it and stuff. And I just kind of put it back on the floor in the holes and stuff, you know, just to get by for a day or two. And then one of these was starting to wiggle loose and stuff. So, so we re, re, redid that, blew the, blew everything out. It was, it had created a mess up here. So see this oil on the floor? That's from that dang chainsaw. If you look back at my setup video, I said something about I need to put like a little bowl or a cup down there because bar oil leaks out of there. So I'm gonna address that today too. I mean, you're always gonna have some leaks here and there. It is what it is. 
And so, yeah, spent the day messing around with this, getting this stuff reattached properly and stuff. And then this is what I'm most excited about. This is the main reason I'm making a video because of this little jobby, this little shelf. This shelf, I know I made some videos, but I don't know if I ever posted it and stuff. This metal thing, I'm going to talk about these stickers here in a minute. But that metal thing, I cleaned out a garage slash pole barn for a buddy who had sold the property and he was had already moved out of state and he needed me to kind of go over there and take a few things out of that pole barn before I changed hands and long story short this metal thing was in there I don't know what it is it's just galvanized doesn't have a back or a bottom or whatever you know and I want to say that you can buy these things at TSC they I want to say they have something to do with farming maybe you know i'm not quite sure but anyways yeah that holds a two gallon gas can perfectly it could probably get a taller one you know i don't know you have to find the right gas can but i've had that gas can forever and then this can gas can this is two and a half gallons or no it's two gallons also had that forever and so once i got that one off the floor i was like i need to get that one off the floor so i had bought these brackets I had bought these brackets. I saw them on, uh, I think on YouTube or whatever. I was looking for something I could build a shelf that I could actually fold it down. And I found these shelf brackets and they can hold a lot of weight, which is crazy. So let me take this off. I got a little eye hook here, obviously. Little eye hook here. This is treated wood. This is just some one by that I had. Anyways, so you push, I think you push these things in. And now it's released and it folds down. And I actually, it'll go back even further, I think. No, maybe not. It seems like you're supposed to go in those notches. I think it's supposed to. Let me try it again. Sorry. Oh, they're so close. I bet you they're supposed to. Anyways, I'm not gonna complain about that. So yeah, it folds out of the way. And that's that. They were, I got those brackets on Amazon and they were like 14 bucks for two of them. And it came with screws and anchor things, you know, if you wanted to anchor, it would depend on what you're anchoring into, like drywall or whatever. And uh, eh, I could have made this thing taller and then not have this, but uh, this is what I had. I, I had some bigger stuff, but I was like, yeah, I'll go with that. So I'm not a carpenter. Thing is like this, you know, the green touch rack, when I put my side-by-side -side in here, which stinks, I, when I put my side-by-side, -side, I have to take my trimmer racks off the wall, which I can actually get it pretty easy. It's like four screws and, and I have them off. And then I have to take that out and it's got like six screws. And then, then I can pull my side-by-side -side in. So I'm gonna be hunting down a trailer for my side by side unless I go on like a big trip and I want it covered but if I just need to transport it up north I, I transport it up north and leave it you know and then bring it back here in the winter so if I only got to do it a couple times a year got to do it a couple times a year anyways yeah so that's what I've been doing I know I've been babbling so I'm gonna finish putting this stuff back in this rack goes right up here oh actually I'll carry it and set it where it goes if you watch my setup video, you'll see where it goes. But I put it up in front of this board here. It just goes up there. Then the mower, the axe mark backs in here, skag backs in here. The Toro Time Master goes right here. But I'm gonna wash everything. Nothing's been washed in a month. Well, three weeks maybe. And so, we're gonna blow these things off, wash them, 
checked oil i just did an oil change on that one and that one that one definitely needs it but i'm at least going to get them blown off and washed and just kind of looked over that's got fresh it's got one day blades on it that's got maybe three day blades on it so grass is dry and uh yeah so anyways just working on some stuff got my little workstation set up here my short tail high lift blades that have the wrong hole diameter my fault anybody needs them let me know i'll give you a smoking deal on them they're 43 dollars so i don't even care if i get my 43 pay the shipping you can have them because i ordered them incorrectly so i gotta take care of my my burn pit here's some logs from a job that we did so i gotta Get, pull all these weeds and stuff throw in there light my burn pit on fire burn it and then clean it haul it out and uh trim all these shrubs trim 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 do some uh liquid weed whip action along there and stuff kind of get things ready for we're having a party here in about a month not a month yeah 22nd of august so I'm not even sure what I was just filming. All right. So anyways, yep. So we've been up north a lot doing the boating thing. Beach, not beach so much, but sandbar on the boat and all that stuff. And uh, just living the dream. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. But I know that uh, lawn care is going to be taking uh, center stage here in another month. So I'm trying to get myself kind of set up for the fall. The Skag, I believe, is getting a clamshell this year. We have a three-bag bagger system now, which works great. Don't get me wrong. It does what it's supposed to do. And um, they are kind of like, uh, if you talk to Countryside Lawns, he's the one that first kind of mentioned it to me, and I went, oh, yeah, I noticed that. You know, once, I, once he mentioned it, he said how the bags taper down at the bottom almost like a popsicle, you know, they kind of taper down. And so when you're putting that grass in, it really packs it in there. It really spikes it down in there. And so when you flip it over, you got to give it a couple good pulls, a couple good tugs or yank, you know, bounces to get that grass to come out. So we're going clamshell this year because Scout's going to be more than likely is going to be doing a lot of fall stuff on his own or at least i want him to be able to do it on his own a lot easier and more efficient and every time you gotta stop shut off the mower and this and that get off you gotta lift that bar up a little bit open up the bag or it's a it's a process it's a process so it's like two grand and it'll be worth every penny i'm sure especially for him but uh every penny so i need to make him him as efficient as possible which leads me to also, I think I'm gonna get another backpack blower. And uh, and so my son, Hunter, he'll be able to, he knows how to run blowers and stuff. So I'm gonna get him in it on the action too, to help Scott with that. He can do that stuff. So anyways, well, I did 13 and a half minutes of babble. Not sure if I actually accomplished what I wanted to talk about. I talked about my shelf, talked about getting the trailer kind of back organized and Resecured down. What I'm going to do with the mowers. Um, in case anybody cares, our swimming pool is looking fantastic. I'll walk out here real quick. I know if I... I was in it last night. And it's 86 degrees. And I haven't had... I've had the, I haven't had the cover on in three months. You know, basically I had it on for the first week when I opened the pool after that nothing and uh got my, my robot down there chilling if you have a pool and you want to enjoy your pool a lot more invest in a robot that's six hundred dollars actually it was less than that it was closer to five in between five and six hundred if i had to buy one of those every year 
I wouldn't bat an eye anymore. I wouldn't bat an eye. Oh, I can see one of the tracks looks like it's kind of sliding off. Anyways, I would buy one every year. That's how good those things work and how much time. You buy back time. Spend five, six hundred bucks and you will buy hours and hours a week. Depending on how much pool maintenance you normally do and stuff, but you will buy back all those hours. And all you have to do is just throw a few chemicals in and push some buttons, dude. It's that easy. All right, unplug my air compressor. Hopefully everybody's having a good week. We're gonna hit it hard Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Got a bunch of other crazy jobs. You know, everybody, of course, during the summer when it's hot as anything, everybody has all these other jobs they want done. Now, I do have another gutter job, some trimming, a couple small trees to deal with, and basically a woodlot clear. Not a woodlot clear, but along her backyard, and there's some trees. It's all rushy and stuff like that. She wants it clean looking, so I don't know. I'll do my best to get to that job. Um, anyways, and the Toyota. I got a fuel injector leak. So I'm going to get an O-ring kit and do, take care of that. And kind of refocus a little bit of time back on the Toyota to get that thing ready also in case... There's supposed to be a backup truck, which leads me back to the trailer. I need to get a trailer that, just a smaller trailer that can haul some mowers for Scout with a Toyota and, uh, or even his blazer. He's got a blazer and it's got a hitch. Um, but I want to make sure I get the, a trailer that will haul my side by side too. So it can be a single axle because it's just going to be for an extreme backup. I'd rather get, I, I'm going to hold off to find a double more than likely. But if I found the right deal for a single axle, I'd be on it. All right. 17 minutes of battle. Talk to you later.